<clears throat> Hello everybody, my name is Yasa Taysir, and this is the first time you will be seeing my face. Today we will be learning about caching. Oftentimes when we write our code, it can be slow. This is likely due to an inefficient algorithm you or me or someone else have, has made. However, oftentimes we do not have the patience or the skills to create something in the log of n or o of n time. Or o of n isn't exactly preferred, more of o of n or constant time. However, there is a better solution to this in some situations where we can simply run our code directly on CPU cache. And uh, today I will be teaching you guys how to implement cache inside of your Python code. And in the meantime, I will. Before we start, I would like to teach you guys what is cache and how it is different from any regular code. So, first of all, all the code we write is stored inside of our system memory, also known as the RAM. The RAM that we can get to is super is close to the CPU, and as a result, is very easy, very very easily able to uh, communicate and a lot quicker than something that is in your storage which is why programs are kept in your storage, however, are executed at memory. Now, in order for the CPU to know what to be executed, it has some of its own storage called cache. Okay? Cache is basically, it's like, uh, it's the close, or one of the closest things to the CPU that is accessible to a developer. The thing that's even more closer is a register, but we don't need to worry about that right now. Now, Oh yeah, sorry about that, just a minor error. Now the next thing we're going to be working now. Now let's explore how our code is actually executed. So let's suppose if I have a program, a Python program, so called test.py. Uh, and and uh, this is also very uh, accurate for any other program we have, like Google Chrome or something like that. So what happens is, is that there is a system memory. All right, let's just take it as this is our uh, memory or our RAM stick. And what happens is that let's suppose if in uh, test.py we have uh, a variable. So uh, name is equal to Bob. All right, so what happens is that when the compiler reads name is equal to Bob, it will first, uh, it will initialize the variable first at uh, the runtime, or as the code is running, and then it immediately saves it onto your system memory. The distance between the program and the memory is a lot farther than from the cache. Now, it is still pretty close by, however, let's just think of it like this. For every 10 milliseconds of worth memory does, the cache can do in 10 nanoseconds. Now. Now you might be thinking, well, if this is such a good idea, then why doesn't everyone just add a cache to their code? Well, there are certain disadvantages. So let's that. So your cache is very small. First of all, the length of your cache is very small, and the main and the only time when using your cache is profitable is if your variables are constantly changing or if code is constantly repeated. So if you were to do something, let's say like recursion. Or uh, and I made a video about recursion. You should check it out. I'm desperate for views. Recursion or a loop. And then it's usable or feasible to do something like uh, to to run your code in the cache. However, uh, it's also not a very good idea to run very long and huge amounts of code. A very good example of when you should be caching your code is the Fibonacci sequence. Your Fibonacci sequence is constantly repeating with numbers. So, like we have 0, 1, and then we just have 1, and then we have 1, 1, and we add that up, right? So now we have 2, and now we uh, continuously just add up on and on and on. So, as you can see, when you're running with a Fibonacci sequence, your code is constantly taking back uh, older variables and adding them together. Because of this, because of this, it makes sense to constantly go back into your code, or or constantly uh, not go back into your code, but but to run your code in cache. 
as opposed to your regular system memory. Now, of course, this uh, is also not true to run something as big as Google Chrome in your cache because your computer will crash, pun intended. Now, enough foreplay. Now let's start off by uh, programming. So, in order to program, let's actually just create... Uh, Okay, let's just open up our file here. Uh, one moment. I'm just opening up Visual Studio Code. Uh, okay. So, all right. Sorry about that. My computer is a bit stuck. Even though I spent like a crap ton of money on this. Okay. Here we are. So, first of all, we're just going to open up Visual Studio. So, I created a directory called cache, and I'm going to make a file called make cache.py. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is import the time module. The time module is very essential here so we can compare the time before and after executing our code. Alright? So, next we're going to create a function called uh, Fibonacci. 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 My spelling is horrible, by the way. Uh, and we create a number variable. And then from this number variable, if the number is uh, greater than or equal to 2, return 1. Otherwise, you can simply just return Fibonacci uh, number minus 1 plus number minus 2. Plus Fibonacci number minus two. So as you can see over here, we are using recursion. Like it's literally calling upon it again and again. Okay. Uh, next of all, we will have a start time and an end time. So start time. And, and now we can just, uh, well, let's just go print Fibonacci. Uh, and we will give it a value of 10. So Fibonacci 10. And we will also print the uh, seconds hook plus. Uh, the current time, so time dot time minus the start time. Okay, let's run this. Uh, so just so you guys know, what I'm doing is, is that first of all, I'm getting the time at that time, like the first time, like when the code starts running, and then the time after the code is, like after the function is finished executing. Okay, what's the problem with this? Do you mean... Oh. And let's just run this. Okay, 55 is our answer, and it took us 6 seconds. Now, let's suppose if I take a bigger input, like 20. No, uh, no, not 120, that's too big. You'll immediately start to see the... 20. All right, now let's just try 50. There's, yeah, as you can see, it's taking quite a bit more longer, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to stop running this because I think it's going to take a while. OK, now I'm just going to show you how to cache the code now. So first of all, we're going to import from the uh, func tools, import cache, import cache. All right, and also this code only works with functions. So I guess that's a blessing in disguise because now you have to write cleaner code. And now you just want to write at cache above whatever code you want. So now when the compiler is reading this, it's going to see the function right beneath it, and it's going to completely run this function in cache while running the rest of this in your system memory. So if I were to just, boom, solve that. Let's try something bigger, like 500. Boom. Yeah, so as you can see, these are huge numbers. 
but the computer is able to do this. This is the power of cache memory. Uh, cache memory is nothing compared to uh, this, the random access memory we have on our computers. It's in a league of its own. Now, I would like to appreciate it for all of you watching my video, and uh, thank you. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, and I will be posting another video sooner or later during this week. Thank you. Have a nice day.